what's going on everybody my name is cameron daniel for those of you who are new and if you are a returning subscriber thank you guys so 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 much as you can tell by the title of this video i'll be talking about why you should not go to howard university and if you haven't already checked out my why you should go to howard university video i would definitely say watch that before you watch this one because i don't like to talk bad about things but we gotta do what we gotta do don't forget to like comment subscribe share with your friends share with your family who may have doubts about you going to Howard university without further ado let's get into this video My major was television film with a minor in theater arts and I attended Howard University from 2018 to 2021. I'll be splicing this video up into five parts. Actually, it's going to be four parts. Part one will be why you shouldn't go to Howard University. Part two will be life at Howard as to why you shouldn't go to Howard University. Friends and other alumni reasonings as to why you shouldn't be at Howard University. And then part four will be the conclusion. So let's start with why you shouldn't go to Howard University. My main reason why I would tell somebody not to attend Howard University is the money. If you have to pay anything slightly out of pocket to attend Howard University, I will tell you it's not worth it. I was one of those people who had to pay out of pocket for the school and I will say it's not worth the money. And especially now with the student loans not fully being forgiven because of the Supreme Court, I would not recommend it. Another reason why is like the buildings are really just outdated. If you ever go visit Howard, you will literally see that there are some buildings not in commission. And you'll be like, okay, but y'all have the Howard banner up here. There's so many things y'all could do with these buildings, so why is it not in commission? And especially since y'all getting so much money, so many grants, why do y'all have so many abandoned buildings? Like, where's the money going? Like, the gym is nice. The football field is nice. If you aren't an athlete, how do you benefit from that? You're not. The building that was the communications building when I was there was allegedly the first Howard Hospital. Our building was very, 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 very ran down. It shows if you walked in there, like, it, it definitely looked like a hospital the way that stuff was um, structured in there. The rooms that we would use for, like, cinematography and TV stuff, like, the green rooms and stuff like that were cute, but it was just very underfunded. Studio equipment, the TV cameras and film cameras that we had when it was time for us to actually create a project, they were very outdated. So imagine working on a camera that came out early 2008 to 2010 and you need to still be working on industry level cameras. We can't do that. The money that was allocated was not going towards the actual things that we needed for our school. And I do applaud my professors because they did the best they could with what they got. As y'all know, the housing crisis at Howard is still definitely a thing. So there's just so many things and they're still selling more buildings and these corporations around Howard University are building luxury apartments that Howard students cannot afford. So there's just it's just confusing to me and crazy. Then the last thing that I have is like, if you're not a social person, if you are very anti-social and you know like nine times out of 10, you're just gonna go to class and be sitting in your room all day, every day, I would not recommend Howard University for you. Nine times out of 10, if you aren't a social person and you're very shy, you're gonna get swallowed up at Howard University because there are a lot of big personalities there from the students and also a lot of big personalities there from the faculty. And if you're very silent, you're very quiet, but you get good grades, it's time for you to get a letter of recommendation what can your professor really say about you oh they get good grades but like what is your personality like how are you outside of the classroom like you have to think about those things when it comes to getting letters of recommendation for internships and real life jobs you want your application to be beefy and all that other stuff and if you are very anti-social and you aren't very sociable but how does that help you stand out so life at Howard as to why I would not suggest you go to Howard the first thing that I have is the Howard runaround baby when I tell you if you ever hear the words Howard runaround it's true you will get the Howard runaround it's not fictional it's not something that's made up in the minds of people You'll get it from the administration, you'll get it from the professors, and you'll also get it from students. And the best way that I can explain the runaround is, for example, because I was a transfer student and a lot of my credits did not transfer over when I came to Howard University. So I had to go up to the administration office to make sure that my credits was being transferred so that way I was classified as a sophomore. Being at the A building, which is the administration building, they would say, oh, you need to go talk to X, Y, and Z. We started at the A building, now we're going to talk to X, Y, and Z. So then I will go to talk to X, Y, and Z, and then X, Y, and Z will be like, well, I don't know why the person at the A building told you to talk to me, because now you need to go talk to one, two, and three. So now you got your papers, you got your files, you already frustrated, so you went from X, Y, and Z, and now you over here talking to one, two, and three. So now one, two, and three, like, well, I don't even know why X, Y, and Z told you to come talk to me when you need to go back to that person at the A building. So now we're in a triangle. 
the how we're freaking running around. So I'm going from X, Y, and Z to 1, 2, 3 to the A building. From the A building back to 1, 2, 3 and to X, Y, and Z because don't nobody know what I'm really supposed to be doing. That's the how we're running around. And it's not fun. It's tiring now. I didn't miss class. I didn't miss on, out on eating. And now I'm frustrated. I didn't spent the whole day running around Howard University. It's not worth it. I guarantee you. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Sexual assault and sexual harassment is something that is very prevalent at Howard University and also at other HBCUs. I'm going to say allegedly a lot. I'm not taking away from any victim's experience because a lot of my friends that I personally know that went to Howard University did and were affected from sexual assault and sexual harassment on campus but I don't want to be sued and I don't want to have any lawsuits out there on my name so I'm gonna to have to say allegedly when I talk about this because some things were never proven to have had happen yeah like I said it's very prevalent on this campus and if you were a victim of sexual assault sexual harassment you have to open a case file and you have to talk to title nine and you have to provide evidence now say this is a drunken night and you don't have any evidence you don't know anything that happened because you were inebriated you were in Intoxicated. You didn't know what was going on, but you woke up the next morning feeling a little queasy, feeling a little something had happened. How do you have the evidence? You don't. So allegedly, if you don't have the evidence, they throw the case out. And and you, it's like you understand why because there's no evidence to fight against this person. But they, this person knows that they are a victim of sexual assault, and a person that did this to them isn't coming forward they aren't saying anything they aren't giving any apologies or anything like that i feel like that should be enough that should be enough to build a case but it's not it does not happen to everybody but nine times out of ten somebody in your friend group may be affected or may be a victim of sexual assault and or sexual harassment i will say it's a very touchy subject and it's something that happens frequently at a lot of hbcus and i'm pretty sure at other schools as well but i can only talk about hbcus and Howard University. The next thing that I have is opportunistic people. There are very big, large personalities at Howard University and they wanna figure out how they can use you to get to where they need to be. I will give y'all an example. One of the orgs that I was a part of was Spotlight. With Spotlight, I was able to be a host on Yard Talk. I was graduating at the time. There was time when people would DM me wanting to be a host on Yard Talk as well. I'm a very observant person. I observe the way people act, how people talk, and the words that they use. Nothing authentic about any of the things that they were saying like, oh, you're a very great host, thank you. And I know I'm a good host, but I know your end goal. I know what you want at the end of this. You just want my spot. I'll take your compliment with a grain of salt. And I'm not saying that's how all students are. You're going to be fake smiling through your whole way through Howard University. But you are going to encounter those people. And if you don't know how to handle it, you will be frustrated. You will be felt as though you're being taken advantage of. And you're not going to want to be there. Not only does that happen at Howard University, it happens in the real world as well. So if you aren't one of those people who can handle confrontation or handle fake people, I wouldn't suggest it for you. Speaking of opportunistic people, there are a lot of biases when it comes to higher university organizations. To keep it white and black, I will just say that some organizations will approve, accept, deny you based upon word of mouth on campus. Is it right? No. Is it wrong? I will also say no. It's like a double-edged sword. I was in a position where I didn't know anything about an applicant and you know, you have to ask people who knows this person. What I was brief on about said person helped make the decision as to if this person would be great to represent the organization or if it would be a bad look to represent the organization. So yes, it is a bad thing that the orgs do have biases, but it's also a great thing because you don't want somebody in your organization who's going to tarnish what is the word what is the word tarnish your reputation on campus like it will tarnish your org's reputation it's a good thing that orgs do have those biases but at the same time like some of the biases be stupid like you mess with my best friend's sister girlfriend x y and z like okay not my fault but <laughs> now on to some thoughts and opinions from my friends as to why you should not attend Howard University. Hey y'all, my name is Ri and I am going to my senior year at Howard University. I am a psychology major and a sociology minor. Just to be completely transparent, there are more reasons why you shouldn't choose Howard than there are why you should choose Howard. Y'all, the Howard runaround is not fake. It's not made up. It's not a myth. It's true. 
it is very very true and you are probably going to experience it before you even step foot on campus i already came from a school district that wasn't one of the best school districts so going to howard from the philly school district it wasn't much of a difference to me it wasn't much of a change so I was kind of used to, you know, having a fight for myself, kind of having a fight for my education, you know. Um, as I'm sure y'all know, we had um, a housing protest. We had mold in our dorms. Um, so, you know, having mold in, like, a school environment wasn't new to me. That doesn't make it okay. But it wasn't new to me. So I was kind of more used to that, and I knew how to handle that compared to people who came from, you know, school districts that didn't deal with problems like that. So that would definitely be one of the main reasons why I would leave Howard or why I would recommend somebody to look elsewhere other than Howard University. Also, housing, like I just mentioned, we had protests for housing last year. Howard, Howard housing sucks. Like, after your sophomore year, do not expect to be on campus. You need to be looking for apartments as soon as you begin your sophomore year freshman year even it's because you will be off campus and unless you know you really got it you are probably not going to be staying in dc unless you luck up most people tend to move to maryland or even virginia if push comes to shove just because rent is cheaper in maryland than it is in dc especially if you want to live right on campus the rent for um apartments right near campus died at about 3k a month keep that in mind when choosing howard university um just know that you will be paying for off-campus apartments and you will have to find housing yourself so that is definitely one of the biggest downsides um especially because you don't really get that living on campus experience after being an underclassman once you're an upperclassman you don't have that experience anymore so when comparing howard to other universities who do offer housing that's just one of the negatives and one of the setbacks that we face here this was also one of the reasons why I chose Howard, but another reason why I would leave Howard or why I would recommend people, people to not choose Howard would also be the financial aid. Because once you're in, there's literally no telling what Howard is gonna do to your financial aid. They can snatch it away at any moment for any given reason. Sometimes it might not even make sense. And because of the Howard runaround, you might not even get a straight answer from admin as to why your scholarship was taken away. Um, also with GPA requirements, they do not play. They do not play at all. If you have an academic scholarship and it says you need a 3.0 every semester and you need 15 credits every semester, they do not play. They will snatch it away without hesitation. Even if you meet all of your requirements, sometimes scholarships just get taken away. Let's say you have a scholarship for 12,000 from the university and you receive an outside scholarship for 50,000. And let's say that 50,000 scholarship from outside covers your whole balance for that year. Howard will take away your other scholarship and they won't reinstate it because they'll say that you already have enough funds. Even if you can't renew that scholarship, once you get that outside scholarship that's over a certain amount, Howard will take away your institutional scholarships. Like, you will not be able to keep it. Another downside that I would say, it doesn't really particularly bother me because like I said, I came from the Philly School District and we didn't have large schools anyways. Our schools tended to look like prisons and they were very run down. Howard's campus, it's barely a campus. It's a very, very small campus compared to schools like NCAT or Xavier or even like the AUC. Like they might have actual campuses and actual buildings and dorms. Howard is definitely, Howard looks like a middle school. It looks like a middle school and all we have is the yard. And our campus is also an open campus. So if you're really looking for that college campus that's going to be expansive and fancy and etc then howard might not be the best choice for you just keep that in mind when applying to the university you know do your research always 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 do your research and hopefully you make the right decision so this person went to howard university i believe their freshman and transferred their sophomore year if i'm correct this person is justin and he now goes to georgetown on a very surface level i transferred because of money i ran into difficulties outside of my control when it came to keeping my scholarship which would have resulted in at least 15k a semester in loans Georgetown ended up giving me an almost full ride when I got in, so it was the best decision for me and my family financially. So again, like I said, if you can't afford it financially, I would not attend Howard University because it's really not worth the money. Also goes on to say, on a deeper note, I was consistently being questioned about my blackness and being a non-passing Afro-Latino. I understand my blackness was called into question on many different occasions. However, being in several high profile orgs on campus, I suppose made me more of a target and made people feel like I owed them something. I was harassed. People online tried finding pictures of my family to use against me. And because of that, my mental health took a huge hit. The spring semester of my freshman year, I realized that's not what I came to a HBCU for and decided to apply to transfer to Georgetown University. I was accepted in the fall and transferred that following January.
January. So again, that just goes on to play with, like I said, just be mindful about who you're surrounding yourself with because there are people who are envious of you. There are people who are very jealous of you at any HBCU you go to, but as you see at Howard University, there are people who will question your blackness if you do not look or you do not present black. So just always keep that in mind. Aja, who is a senior psychology major, said one thing I did not like about Howard is how difficult they make your life. When you go into your junior slash senior year, you would think since we're graduating soon that they would have many places to go to help us to be on top of our stuff. Another thing I didn't like is that some people are just not genuine. It's really trial and error until you meet someone who isn't Girl, I graduated, but hold on now. Inevitably, <laughs> y'all can read the word. Odd. The last thing that I don't like is that white people will go here and take seats away from other black people at an HBCU. That is a good one. Betty Joe over on Instagram said the administration is trash and that, that the school is very clicky. Just say you shouldn't go for the A building. I'm assuming that they mean that they give you the runaround. You don't really know what the hell is going on. They don't know what the hell is going on. We heard some advice and some tips and tricks of what we should do to avoid and things that we've heard from our friends. So now as in a conclusion as to why you should not go to Howard University, I'm gonna just be frank with y'all. It's really just to each his own. My time at Howard University, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot how to protect myself. I learned how to be an advocate for myself. And I learned how to also help others be advocates for themselves. Everything that I talked about in this video, nine times out of 10 is things that will happen in the real world. But I wanna let you guys know what you're getting yourselves into so you aren't 100% shocked and your parents aren't 100% shocked when they send you off and you go to college and any of these events ever happen to you, you know that there are resources out there at the university who people who do care and who you can reach out to so that way you aren't alone and you know help and pave those potholes so you don't fall into it and feel like well damn there wasn't nothing out there that could possibly save me from this incident but at the end of the day you are human and you know what's best for you yeah just take my advice with a grain of salt you know just keep it in the back of your mind if you do choose to go to Howard if you want to straddling on the fence of another university I hope it helps you either kick Howard University off the list and go to the other school but again it's your decision it's your life you are now an adult and you have to make decisions that will be best for you and with that being said thank you guys so much for watching this video and don't forget to like comment subscribe and follow me for more Howard University content and other content just throughout my life and I will see you guys in the next video bye